Missile defense systems are intended to safeguard a country against imminent ballistic missile attacks. Amongst all the missile defense systems in the world today, we've picked the two well-known missile defense systems of USA and Russia, that is the TAD and S-400. We all know the S-400 missile system is touted to be a rival to the US TAD, so let's compare. The U.S. TAD stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, which is an anti-ballistic missile defense system designed to shoot down short to medium and intermediate-range ballistic missiles in their terminal phase by intercepting with a hit-to-kill approach. The S-400, also known as the SA-21 Growler, is an anti-aircraft weapon system developed in the 1990s by Russia's Almas Central Design Bureau as an upgrade of the S-300 family. It has been in service with the Russian Armed Forces since 2007. Both are powerful missile systems which are unique in its own way. TAD operates in a unique battle space intercepting both endo- and exo-atmospheric short- to intermediate-range ballistic missiles. The TAD interceptor carries no warhead but relies on its kinetic energy of impact to destroy the incoming missile, while the S-400 carries a direct explosion warhead. The S-400 missile system has about eight launchers, each of which has four missiles. Thus, if we consider the situation from the point of view of the divisions, then the cost of each S-400 is approximately $500 million, while the THAAD batteries include six launcher vehicles, each equipped with eight missiles at a purchase cost of $800 million US dollars per battery. Talking about missile specifications, the Thought missile is 6.17 meters in length and is equipped with a single-stage solid-fuel rocket motor and having a launch weight of 900 kilograms. The target object data and the predicted intercept point are downloaded to the missile prior to launch. The updated target and intercept data are also transmitted to the missile in flight. The Russian S-400 primarily uses the 48 and 6 missile series and these missiles allow it to hit long-range aerial targets and are capable of intercepting ballistic missiles across a 60km radius using in both cases a 143kg high-explosive fragmentation warhead. The S-400 can also fire the 9M96E and 9M96E2 having a range of 40km and 120km. They are advanced surface-to-air missiles designed to engage a wide range of aerodynamics and ballistic targets in the most severe clutter and jamming environments with unprecedented effectiveness. The final missile series used by the S-400 is the 40N6ESAM, a long-range family that can extend the air defense capabilities of the system to 400 km and having a flight altitude of up to 185 km. The operational range and flight altitude of the TAT missile is only 200 km and 150 km. The so-called 40N6E SAM has a maximum target speed of 70,000 km per hour, which is 1.7 times more compared to the TAT system. The TAT missile is powered by a single-stage solid propellant rocket motor with thrust vectoring. The rocket motor is supplied by Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne. After burnout, the booster is separated from the kill vehicle, which continues to the interception point. While the S-400 is powered with Yaroslav MZ842 4.10 diesel V12, which produces an output of 400 horsepower. Now, coming to guidance system. The TAD is guided with Indium Antimonide Imaging Infrared Seeker Head. The 40N6 missile of the S-400 missile system, on the other hand, has active radar homing and is typically used against airborne warning and control system, joint surveillance target attack radar system, EA-6 b support jammers and other high-value targets. So, which of these two has a better radar? The TAT system is provided by the Raytheon Systems A and TPY-2 ground-based radar for surveillance, threat classification, and threat identification. TAT can also be queued by military surveillance satellites such as Brilliant Eyes. The radar has the capability to acquire missile threats at ranges of up to 1,000 kilometers. 
while the fire control and target tracking radar of the S-400 is the 92N6E, the radar is based on the MZKT-7930 8-8 vehicle. The radar can detect and track aircraft, rotorcraft, cruise missiles, guided missiles, drones and ballistic rockets within the distance of 600 kilometers. It can simultaneously track up to 300 targets. As for mobility, the TAT launch unit vehicle is a modified Oshkosh Truck Corporation heavy expanded mobility tactical truck with load handling system. It is a 12 meter long by 3.2 meter wide, while on the launcher lead acid batteries provide the primary power. The batteries are recharged with a low noise generator, while the trailer system of the S400 Triumph is towed by the Russian truck 6 into 6 BAZ 6402015, but the S400 can also be mounted to the truck Almas 5P90SE or the Almas 5P90TMU. The S400 trailer can also be towed by the MAZ-79100. Now let's look at combat experience. TAD was originally scheduled for deployment in 2012, but initial deployment took place in May 2008. TAD had been deployed in Guam, the United Arab Emirates, Israel, Romania and South Korea. The S-400 is yet to be tested in battle, so there is no record of it having been fired during actual combat. The system has been deployed in Syria but have not engaged in any targets. There have been reports that the S-400 deployment effectively converted the Russian operating zone over Syria into a no-fly zone. Some Western media reports that US-led coalition and Israeli aircraft avoid the area covered by the S-400. The S-400 Triumph can destroy Tomahawk cruise missiles and other types of missiles and can also detect stealth aircraft. But how effective is the stealth object's detection capability is not known. The S-400 can detect other targets at all altitudes of their combat employment and at maximum ranges. This air defense missile system can simultaneously engage 36 targets, while the TAT system has maintained a 100% success rate over its last 16 intercept tests since the beginning of its production. The system used a government-developed remote launcher kit in its 16th attempt in August 2019 for the first time to extend the range of the defended area. Both of them, I think, are unique in its own way. So what do you guys think? We'd like to hear your thoughts. Do comment down in the comment section below. And with this, we'd like to sign off for today. Until next time, bye-bye.